Hey everyone, welcome back to Football Talk with Vinny. Obviously in today's video, we're gonna be going over the divisional round. I'm still a little bummed about the playoff loss for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, if you did see my playoff prediction video, I did have Dallas winning. I did pick a very narrow score. And I had said, it's really gonna come down to the first quarter, right? Because I said, with the way that the Niners are, they're a very run heavy team. So if they're able to hold the ball for 35, 40 minutes and really control the clock, it's gonna be very difficult for Dallas to win. And the reverse is true as well. If Dallas was able to get out in front early and force Jimmy G to have to make throws to win the ball game, I thought Dallas could win. Now, obviously it played out the very first way, which is the Niners kind of dominated the entire first quarter. I think at the end of the first, they had the ball for 13 of the 15 minutes. So they really just kind of made it their style of game. Um, give Dallas credit though, they, they were down 23 to seven, I believe it was, or 23 to 10, and about starting the fourth quarter. And they were able to come back a little bit and make it and make it a game. And again, they I don't really focus as much on the last possession like most Cowboys fans do because they're pissed that they lost. I focus on the possession before. You had the ball with about two minutes and 32 seconds to go, down six points. That was your chance to win it. There was no Fred Warner, there was no Bosa. So if you were going to win that ball game, that was the possession. Right? That's the possession where you have a guy like Aaron Rodgers and you know, a guy like Tom Brady, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Dak, but that's where you have to get it done, right? We're paying Dak $40 million now. That is the drive he has to get it done. And CeeDee Lamb obviously has some blame in that as well. He had the key drop on third and 11. Sure, it wouldn't have been a first down, but you would have got four or five yards. I'm sorry, it was second 11. You, the drop made it third and 11. And again, had you gotten four or five yards on that play, it would have been third and seven, third and six. So even if you get four or five yards on that, now it's only a fourth and two. Instead, you don't get it, and then you have to punt. But anyways, let's not talk about the teams that lost. Let's talk about the teams that won, and we'll go over my predictions for the divisional round. So in the last round, I actually picked almost every team right, except for obviously the Dallas Cowboys. I remember when I picked the teams, I said this is kind of weird. I have every home team winning and that usually doesn't work out well. So unfortunately, the one team I got wrong was my own team. We'll see how, I, how good I do this week going into these four games. So we'll start in the NFC. We'll start with the Green Bay Packers against these 49ers. Obviously because Dallas lost, it kind of messed up both of the playoff games that I thought um, were going to be going into this week. So we'll definitely have to go back over those. So with the Green Bay Packers and the 49ers, obviously you look at the statistics, it's very close. They're both very close in their statistics. Again, both of them are, you know, around top 10 is almost every category. We'll talk about the Niners first. They were 12th in passing offense. They were number seven against rushing offense, number seven in total offensive yards gained, 13th in points scored. On the defensive side, they were sixth in passing, seventh in rushing, third in total, 10th in points allowed. Green Bay, about a fringe top 10 in every stat as well. They were eighth in pass offense, 18th in rush offense, 10th in total, also 10th in points. Then on the defensive side, they were 10th in pass defense, 11th in rush defense, good for the ninth best total defense, and 14th against the pass. So this is really just two very well-balanced teams. Obviously, the Packers have the ginormous edge when it comes to the quarterback position, whereas the Niners have the edge probably in terms of the defensive side of the ball. Niners, you know, have played the Packers a lot recently over the last couple of years. The Niners got the best of them a couple years ago. In the last, I think, game or two, the Niners have played the Packers. The Packers have narrowly won. Now, with that being said, again, this is going to be a very, very tough game. I think there's going to be a ton of pressure on the Green Bay Packers, specifically Aaron Rodgers, because I think the whole week leading up to it is going to be, you know, is this Aaron Rodgers' last game in Green Bay? If they don't get it done, they go home to the San Francisco 49ers. This is going to be a long off season. So I think that doesn't help a team coming into their first playoff game. <clears throat> a very hot 49ers team. And this game, I think, is going to be pretty much like the Dallas Cowboys prediction game, where if the Niners are able to run the ball effectively in that first quarter and able to kind of keep the ball away from Aaron Rodgers, what you do is you shorten the game. And the less possessions, the better. When you're a defensive and running game team, you want to shorten the possessions. You want to make it less possessions for teams. 
Because what that does is it does not allow the opposing team's offense to have more drives. And the less drives you give an explosive offense like Green Bay, the more likely they are to put up 35 plus points on you. Whereas if you limit the possessions and you have a good defense, if you get a couple of stops on a few of those possessions, it's very difficult to get 30. So I think the game is going to be pretty much very similar to how I think that the Niners-Cowboys game, you know, for the team that wins, obviously, is how it's going to go. If the Green Bay is able to get a couple scores early in that first quarter, it's going to force him to throw. And we really know that even though Jimmy G won the game, he didn't win the game, right? He almost lost it for him, actually, against the Dallas Cowboys after their team had played so well for three and a half quarters. And that's what happens when you are in playoff games. You're going to only really go up against very well-balanced teams or teams that have elite quarterback play. The San Francisco Niners just so happen to be one of the very good teams, well-balanced. You don't really make it to this point unless you have an elite quarterback play or one of the best overall built teams in the league. That being said, I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers in this one uh, very, very narrowly. I'm going to go with them 24 to 20. I just think that the rest with Green Bay, along with the fact that Jair Alexander should be back I think that's going to possess a lot of problems for the 49ers offensively because you can probably just play Jair Alexander straight up on you know, whether it's Debo Samuel, Samuel or Brandon Ayuk. And then you would hope that in your mind, you Green Bay, that that would shut down that receiver. And then you can either A, just put that eighth guy in the box and really try to limit that run game. And if you're able to do that, you're forcing Jimmy G to have to make some plays with the other receivers. And again, Jimmy G is not that great of a quarterback. He's just fortunate to play on a very, very good team. The other game, let me go over as well, which is going to be now the Bucks and the Rams. Now, if you remember that game, the Bucks played the Rams earlier in the season. I think it was week three. And the Rams kind of blew them out. They won by a comfortable margin. Now, I don't believe that's going to be the case this game, but they did play one of their best games last week against the Arizona Cardinals. And I think if you're the Bucks, right, you don't have the talent on the offensive side that you had in week three when you played in the first time right now i think if you are the st louis rams los angeles rams excuse me going into this game you have to feel very confident that you're going to beat this team bad actually because i think if you're the rams you think okay well we beat them before this game should be easier we're going to put jalen ramsey on mike evans and shut him down all game and now the game plan is brady's going to have to find the scotty millers and the Gronkowskis, and those guys are going to have to make enough plays to beat us because there is no Chris Godwin, there is no AB. So I think if you are a Rams fan, you have to feel overly confident that you're gonna win the game. I know you're going into Tampa, but I don't think that you really care at this point. The way that the Rams have played offensively over the last couple of weeks have been pretty well. Obviously in the playoff game against a good defense, you played exceptional. Obviously Stafford will have the pressure again. He's going to have to play well, but with having Odell Beckham and Cooper Cup, right, and the weapons that they have, I think it takes a little less pressure off of him because you have the weapons that really Brady used to have before the injuries started to rack up on the team. With that being said, it's Tom Brady, right? It's very difficult to pick against Brady in a playoff game, so I don't think it's gonna be a rout, but I do have the Rams winning 31 to 28. The other two matchups, I'm gonna quickly go over them just because I already kinda had them as my predicted matchup for the longer video that I did where I predicted the entire postseason. So with the Titans and Bengals, again, Bengals have a very good pass offense and they're very good at stopping the run. They had the seventh best pass offense and the fifth best rush defense. Again, facing Derrick Henry is not the same as facing any other team you're ever gonna face. And again, we'll see, he was cleared for contact yesterday and they said that they will see whether he's going to play or not. Um, but it's kind of hard to imagine him not playing Again, I guess if he doesn't respond well to the couple of days of padded practice, he's not gonna play, but I just don't see that being the case. Now, as far as when he plays, it's gonna come down to how he does, right? It could go one of two ways, like I said. He could be very rusty because he hasn't played live football in two, three months, or he could be so well rested that they're able to give him 40 touches and he just absolutely kills the Cincinnati Bengals and the fifth rush defense. I think if you're Tennessee, you have faith that you can win a game either way, whether Derrick Henry plays or he plays well or doesn't play well, you're gonna win the ball game either way. Obviously having Derrick Henry is going to help you, but I think if you're Tennessee, the number one seed, you've done it for eight, nine weeks without him. You've won a bunch of big games that nobody thought you'd win without him. You're probably the most disrespected number one seed, I think, in recent memory. Most number one seeds, you know, they come into the postseason with some hype. I don't really know of anybody who's even picking Tennessee 
to get to the Super Bowl, let alone win a playoff game. You know, I think a lot of people are going to probably pick the Bengals to win this game because they're because of Joe Burrow. And who knows, right? When you got an elite quarterback like Joe Burrow is playing, you know, anything could happen. I just feel like the Tennessee Titans as a team are a more balanced team. I feel like they're gonna get it done. I feel like Derrick Henry's going to be himself and he's going to be dominant. But I feel like even if he's not, again, their receivers are finally healthy. You know, AJ Brown and Julio Jones are gonna be on the field at the same time, which hasn't happened much of this season. I really don't feel a need to change the final score that I had the first time I'm gonna pick Tennessee 27 to 24. And very quickly, we're gonna go over the Buffalo Kansas City Chiefs matchup. Obviously with the Buffalo Bills offense, they played as well as you can play against one of the best defenses you're ever going to face. And like I said, if they're able to get that victory against New England, it's gotta give them so much confidence knowing that now we're gonna play an actual shit defense, right? It was ranked 27th in passing, 21st in rushing, and like 27th in total. Like it's a bad defense, right? They just got a couple turnovers and were able to get some stops you know, because their offense puts a lot of pressure on opposing teams' offenses because they know that they're going to put up 30-plus. But again, like I said, Buffalo is one of the few teams that's not scared. Buffalo could put up 30 points in the blink of an eye, as you saw what they did against the fucking New England Patriots, the number two defense in the league. So, you know, it's funny. I actually saw a post again of Stephon Diggs, right, when they had lost to the Chiefs in the championship game, how he just stood on the side watching them do their parade for the AFC Championship game. So you have to know that the Buffalo Bills, it's not just Stephon Diggs, but everyone on that roster is really just, this is a revenge game for them. They were so close last year. They were such a good team last year, and they kind of built their defense around trying to stop this Kansas City Chiefs offense. So I do think it's going to be a different outcome in the terms of like what happened last year. I do think Buffalo is the better team. I do think they're going to win the game. Again, when you have Patrick Mahomes, anything could happen. If Patrick Mahomes is able to put up 30 plus on them, it's going to put a lot of pressure on Josh Allen and our offense to put up 40. Um, not say that they can't do it, but it is gonna put more pressure on them. But I think that the Buffalo Bills are gonna able to get a couple stops. Again, I don't really change the final of this one because it's the same matchup I had predicted. So I have Buffalo winning it 31 to 27. That's my predictions for the four games. Let me know what you think. Do you have different predictions? Do you think the other teams are going to win. Just let me know in the comment section below. But I definitely look forward to watching the games and obviously what looking forward to watching the Tennessee Titans and Green Bay Packers, right, in their first playoff game. And obviously for me personally, I look for Tennessee and the Rams, you know, to kind of uphold, obviously, the Super Bowl prediction that I had in the beginning of the season. Obviously, those are extremely difficult to predict in the beginning of the season and get them right. So the fact that I'm still alive with both teams in the divisional round is great. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like the video, make sure to hit a like as that does help out the channel. Also, consider subscribing if you're not subscribed. But that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much. Bye.